okay so uh, this is a paper paper four and this is for the next year examination 2022 I mean this is a specimen paper I mean the sample paper paper four and the time is two hour and the total marks are 100 this mark total marks are 100 now look at the data page two so these values will be given and then the list of the formula which will be given in paper four this is related to the as syllabus and then these are related to the a2 syllabus now move to question number one the question is explain how the forces are forced on the satellite can result in the satellite being in the circular orbit. So there is a force of attraction, I mean the gravitational force between the satellite and the planet. So we will write gravitational force between satellite and the planet is providing centripetal force to keep the satellite in the orbit around the planet. So I repeat, the gravitational force between the satellite and the planet is providing centripetal force to keep the satellite in the circular orbit. The next question is, the Earth and the Moon may be considered to be the uniform sphere that are isolated in space. The Earth has a mass capital M, radius capital R, and the density, mean density is a rho because the density of the planet is not uniform, so it's a mean density. The moon, the mass small m, is a circular orbit about the Earth with the radius nr as illustrated in the figure. Mean, this is the radius of the orbit of the moon, nr, n times the radius of the planet, radius of the Earth. The moon makes one complete orbit of the Earth in time, capital D, show that the density rho of the Earth is given by the expression rho is equal to three by n cube over gt square, okay? So the gravitational force between moon and the Earth is providing the centripetal force because the weight of the moon is negligible. Actually, the force of gravitation is equal to weight plus centripetal force. But the pull of the earth due to small g is negligible. So we ignore this in the orbit. So the centripetal force is equal to gravitational force. Now gravitational force is g m capital M over n r square because the radius the distance is n r and the centripetal force is m n r omega square and omega is equal to 2 pi over t square because the centripetal force is equal to m r omega square and the omega is 2 pi over t now we can cancel 1m, this is the mass of the moon, and then G capital M divided by this nr is multiplied with this, so it becomes nr power 3, and then this becomes 4 pi square over t square, 2 square, pi square, and t square. Now, after this, we can write G times the mass of the earth, and the mass of the earth in terms of the density so the mass is density multiplied by volume divided by n cube, r cube is equal to four pi square over t square. So G multiplied by density and the volume of the earth, which is considered perfect sphere, 
It's not actually, but we assume. So four by three pi r cube divided by n cube r cube four pi square over t square. Now look, this r cube is cancelled. This four is cancelled. One pi cancelled with this one left. So we have g rho divided by this three n cube is equal to one pi remaining divided by t square. But we have to write this as rho. So we can write here the density rho is equal to three n cube pi divided by g t square. So this three n cube multiplied here and then g divided here with t square. So this is the answer. Look, we have to prove the same. So this is the derivation. Move to the next part. The radius r of the earth is 6.38, 10 power six meter. This is the radius of the earth. And the distance between the center of the earth and the center of the moon mean this is the radius of the orbit. This is the radius of the earth, radius of the orbit. Time period is 27.3. Use the expression in the previous expression, calculate the density. Look. The radius of the orbit is represented by nr. And the radius of the orbit is 3.84 into 10 power 8, n value required. And the radius of the planet is 6.38 into 10 power 6. So first we have to calculate this n. So it is 3.84 into 10 power 8 divided by 6.38 into 10 power 6. So answer is approximately coming 60.1960.2. Now, we have to use the same formula, which is rho is equal to, look at the previous one, 3n cubed by 3n cubed by divided by gt squared. Now put the values, so three, this n is 60.19 cube. And multiply by pi value 3.14, divided by g value 6.67 into 10 power minus 11. And then time period is 27.3 days. So multiply by 24, it becomes r, then multiply by 3600, for the seconds and then whole square. So after calculation, this answer is coming 5.54 into 10 power three, 5.54, 10 power three. So this is the question, total marks nine. Now move to the next question. The question number two is a cylindric, a cylinder contains 5.12 moles of the ideal gas at the pressure of 5.6 into 10 power 5 pascal and the volume 3.80 10 power minus 2. Calculate the thermodynamic temperature of the gas. Thermodynamic temperature, moles given. So pressure multiplied by volume is equal to NRT. So the T is equal to pressure multiplied by volume divided by NR. So the temperature in thermodynamic scale, meaning the Kelvin is, the pressure is 5.60 into 10 power five, multiply by volume 3.80, 10 power minus two, divided by number of the moles 5.12, and the molar gas constant is 8.31. So after calculation, the answer is coming 500 approximately. Next, the average kinetic energy of the molecule of the gas is given by the expression. This is the kinetic energy of the one molecule. Where K is the Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature, thermodynamic temperature. The gas is heated at the constant pressure so that the temperature rises by 125. This is a change of the temperature. Show that the new volume of the gas is this. New volume of the gas is 4.75, 10 power minus two. So, New volume is required. So the volume, pressure, constant. So we will write here, pressure multiplied by volume is equal to NRT. 
So the volume is required. So volume is equal to NRT divided by P. So look, number of moles same, 5.12. It's given in the first line. Molar gas constant is 8.31. And the temperature initial is 500. And 125 is the increase. So we have to use the total new pressure, 625, mean this and the pressure is constant. And the pressure is 5.60 into 10 power 5, 5.60 into 10 power 5. So after the calculation, you will get the same answer. So hence proved. Next, increase, calculate the increase in internal energy of the gas, explain your working, increase in the internal energy. This gas is considered the ideal gas. So the increase in internal energy of the ideal gas is actually the increase in its total kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy of the one molecule is three by two kT, but the total kinetic energy will be three by two nKT. But here we have to measure the increase. So we will write the Delta T. Look, three by two KT is the kinetic energy of one molecule. Three by two nKT for the total gas kinetic energy, but we have to measure the change. So definitely we put here the Delta T. So three by two, K Boltzmann constant is 1.38 into 10 power minus 23 multiply by this N. The number of the particles is the number of moles multiply by Avogadro's constant. So the number of moles are 5.12 multiply by Avogadro's constant 6.023 into 10 power 23 and multiply by the change of the temperature is given here 125. So three by two, Boltzmann constant, number of moles, Avogadro's constant, change of temperature. So after calculation, this answer is coming 7980 in three significant figure. Next, the part is, Use the information to calculate the external work done during the expansion. Look, this is an important expansion. I mean, the work is done by the gas expansion. So the work is equal to pressure multiplied by change of the volume. And the pressure is 5.60 into 10 power 5 and the change of the volume. So the final volume was 4.75 into 10 power minus two. And the initial volume was 3.80 into 10 power minus two. So the difference of the volume multiplied by the pressure. So the answer is coming 5320 Joule. Pressure multiplied by change of the volume. Use the first law of the thermodynamics to determine the total thermal energy transferred to the gas and B, explain your working. Total thermal energy supplied to the gas. So look, due to the expansion, the work is done by the gas. So it is minus 5.320 Joule. So the increase in internal energy mean delta U is equal to thermal energy transferred to the gas mean plus Q and plus work done on the gas. So actually the formula is plus Q is equal to U minus W. So we can write here U is equal to Q plus W. So we have to write here the increase in the internal energy first. This Q energy supplied, look at this formula, increase in the internal energy. And then the work done. by the system mean Q is equal to this.
Okay, according to the first law of thermodynamics, heat energy is supplied to the system is equal to increase in its internal energy plus work done by the gas. So the total thermal energy supply, the increase in the internal energy is 7980 plus, and this work done by the gas is 5320. So after calculation, the answer is coming one, three, three, zero, zero, zero. Look, this is the increase in internal energy. This is the work done by the gas. So both are added. The answer is coming this 13,300. Okay, now the next question is, a bar magnet of the mass 250 gram is suspended from the free end of the spring. Look at the diagram. The magnet hangs so that one plate is near the center of the coil of the wire. The coil connects, connected in series with the resistor and switch. The switch is open. The magnet is displaced vertically and then allowed to oscillate. At time T0, the magnet is oscillating freely. At time T6, the switch in the circle circuit is closed. The variation of the time t is this. So look, the switch is closed at six. So after six, damping starts, decrease in the amplitude. For the oscillation of the magnet, use the data to determine three sign two significant figures, the frequency. So the frequency is equal to one over time period. We will look at the graph to find the period. So this is the period and it is approximately 2.5. So this is, I think this is one divided by time period is one, two, three, four, and five. So this is 0.5. So we will write here one divided by 2.5 or 2.4. So it's approximately coming 0.42 Hertz. Or you can use total number of the waves and divide it by. So period is approximately 2.4, 2.5. Next, energy of the oscillation. The energy formula is 1 by 2 m amplitude square omega square so 1 by 2 the mass of this is given here the mass is look at this it's a 250 gram so we will write here 0 0.250 multiplied by amplitude initial it's 1.5 centimeter from the graph so 1.5 into 10 power minus 2 it's square multiply by omega is two pi over t or two pi f. So two into pi into the frequency, which is 0 0.42 and then square. After the calculation, the answer is coming 1.9 into 10 power minus four. When the switch is closed, the oscillations are damped, explained with reference whether the damping is light, critical. So the damping is light because the amplitude is decreasing gradually, slowly. So this is the light damping because the amplitude is decreasing slowly. 